Hello everyone, Ed. Welcome back to Triton TV. Or if you're new here, welcome aboard. It's good to have you. Um, today, as you can see by the title, this is episode one of the Emulators ROM and Virtualization um, series. Today, I'm going to just show you real quickly how to set up a Nintendo and uh, NES emulator. And then if you have ROMs, you can go ahead and load them onto it. So let's go and start a screen recording here. And we're gonna pull this up here. I'm on emulatorgames.net slash emulators. All I did was click on the emulators tab. We're gonna click on Nintendo and this FCEX 2.2.2 is the um, NES emulator that I already have. But all you're gonna do is click on that click on download, it'll take a few seconds, and then you'll see it pop up um, once it reads your drives, and it'll, usually downloads will go to the last spot that you download. So you're gonna go ahead and download the zip file, and then you can click down here and go show in folder. Why is it not showing it? Weird, that was weird. Um, and then you're gonna, first thing you wanna do is extract it and then I always shift delete the zip folder. I always do that with everything. There's no need to have all this extra crap. Ooh, whatever. I'll just blur that out. Okay, so I believe, I can't remember if when you first do it, if it'll run a setup, but I already have this installed. And if you look at your control panel, it doesn't install like a normal program. These types of things kind of just run on their own. They don't really need to be fully <gasps> installed as long as you have this extracted folder um, it's ready to go. So you'll go ahead and click on it and this is what it looks like. We're gonna go ahead and minimize that, maximize this. And they're all pretty similar. I believe when you first start these up most of them go through a configuration but there's just a few things that you'll want to um, double check. Just get familiar with the layout of the land file. This is where you're going to um, figure out how to load a ROM and whatnot. Um, this one should already have the directory. It's mine is loaded on my G drive in a folder called ROMs. And um, a lot of these emulators can actually read the zipped folder, so you don't even need to unzip them, which is nice because it saves space. So yeah, just get familiar with the layout. Um, file is where you can check out your save states. And I believe there's a screen recording system inside of these on their own. I don't really mess with that. Um, you can change the emulation speed, which is pretty common on most of them. I never really mess with that, but like games like Pokemon on like a Game Boy Advance, that comes in handy because like there's nonstop running around in that game. Um, but yeah, so the first thing you want to do is go through configuration and you'll usually want to read um, the help or about me. Um, setup, I believe, I can't remember if this one has one in that folder. Let's take a peek here. Downloads. I don't remember if it has a read. Most of them will leave a readme inside here. Um, it's okay. You can always look up this thing and most of them have really good documentation of what you're supposed to do when you set them up. So the first things you're going to want to do is just come double check. I'll just show the settings that are on mine. Uh, real quickly and you can pause it. PAL is for anybody outside the US basically. It's just a slightly different frame rate. Um, I don't remember the numbers, but yeah, so you can set up your directory. Oh, it looks like this one isn't set up. But yeah, you, for ROMs, you can just click on here and then go to um, where you end up saving your ROMs. FCX games. And then when you go to like open ROMs, it'll, it was already looking in there. It's kind of weird when you have it installed in two different locations, but yeah, all you're gonna really wanna do is know where your ROMs are, get all your configurations set up. Um, so let's just start clicking on these directories. You see, it'll save that. So next time you pull it up. Um, GUI, there's a couple different settings there. The main things are input. Um, let's go ahead and use this. So configuring is pretty easily up, oops, down, left, right, um, select, we're going to use, I don't know, this button, I guess, and then start, 
I don't care about turbo. A and B. And you can set up the second one too. Um, but you can always save these, I believe. Input presets. Create input configuration preset one. So it should save that. They're all the same. They all, you can save your settings. And once you get them, it's nice because then you just load it and play. Um, so those are the few things you're going to want to do. Um, there's a couple other things like sound settings, like the hertz rate and whatnot. Um, you can look at my settings and copy these if you need to. This one's actually not set up how the other one was. Oops. Either way, it's all pretty simple. Um, looks like there's some timing settings here. Video. This is one of the other. So it's mainly just input, video, and like the directive for the games. And after that, you're just going to want to play. So yeah, you'll just want to enter your screen resolution here. I believe it should load by default. I think it detects the screen resolution. But if not, whatever. Um, then you can turn on a couple of other things. But yeah, from that point to load a game, you're just going to click on Open ROM. And if you set the directory, um, it'll automatically pull this up, but I think as soon as you pick one from your directory, it'll save that as the directory. So yeah, I can just pick a game here, like let's say Yoshi. I don't know. We're not going to play this one. <laughs> oh, I've never played that game. Let's see. We'll just do Zelda 2. Uh... Oh, weird. <laughs> weird. Whatever. So yeah, you just load your games. And then from there, you can do what's called save states. So what you're going to want to do is learn the save state um, keys. Like let's say you're working on an in-game completion thing and it requires no saves or whatever. You can use save states. It'll save at the exact moment um, that you uh, push it and it won't count as an in-game save. It's the system saving the exact um, setup. So it looks like this one is I. So I could click I and then next time I play the game, I could just push P, I believe is what it looks like. Yeah. So yeah, then you can just push P. So if you're like at a boss or something, you can push that and you don't have to do the in-game save. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You're going to download the executable. Um, you're going to unzip it. And then I would shift delete the zip folder once you've unzipped it. Set up a directory. Let's say you have a drive with a lot of space. It's not your main drive. You don't need your fastest drive with these. These don't really take that much power, especially the older systems. And then, um, yeah, you're gonna unzip it, set up your directory, just set up, you know, the way I do it, I'll show you actually. Um, so go to my G drive. We'll go to the G drive, and then we'll go to ROMs, and then we'll, I, I just have, yeah, so I just have a, a folder on my G drive, which is my video editing drive, and then um, I'll just have one for each system. And then when you go into the system, it's the default layout and then you'll see games, and then you'll see that's where all the games are located. So if you just follow that same convention, you'll know where all your games are. Um, and you can even save that on a USB stick and like take it on your laptop. Let's say you go on a trip or something, you have a desktop laptop. You can take this, save it to a USB, and then lug it, load it into your laptop and be exactly where you're at. So it's a really cool hobby to like, just have really simple, easy games to play. Um, ROMs are getting harder and harder every year to find. Some of the sites go down. I'll leave links in the description for some of the sites that I like to use for emulators. You can figure out ROMs on your own. Um, but that is it for episode one of Emulators, ROMs, and Virtualization. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if this is something that interests you. I'm going to go ahead and run through all of the systems that I have and just real quickly explain how to set them up. They're all pretty much the same. I'm just trying to put, um, punch out some more com content. So yeah. I really appreciate the likes and subscribes. Um, let me know down below if you have any questions and have fun playing retro games.
See you later.